Good afternoon. My name is Mike Savini, and I will be doing a presentation on the UTC Central Energy Plant Cooling Tower. Outline, give you the background of the cooling tower, the measurements that I took over there, the calculations, and the results, and then finally the conclusions. This is the energy balance equation. So you've got the energy flow rate, and then you've got the mass flow rate, and then you've got the change specific differently. This is a schematic of the cooling fan systems that we have over there. That's a breakaway in the middle, and then these are the details on the inside. It uses a wood splash fill for the, um, for the cooling fan details. These are the schematics at the top of the cooling fan towers, two very large fans here. And those look like this. So you've got the motor, and then you've got the fans, and then they're housed right there. This is a velocity profile. So this was done with an anemometer. So you've got the velocity measurement points right here. And then you've got the average air velocities in feet per minute from the outside going to the inside. So you see they increase as they go up and then they decrease right there when you get closer to the center. And this was another set of the velocity measurement points or I measured them here. And then this is the radius, so from right there is nine feet, very, very large system. The cross-sectional areas are listed right here for each one of the sections, and then you've got the center disk area. So you've got two of those, one of, on each one of the towers. So that's kind of just a, a breakdown of the measurements and the different um, aspects of, of that band. And then this is a graphical formula of the cooling tower, the, the uh, profile. So you've got the air velocity in feet per minute, and you've got the radius, and you can see in the center uh, there's no data because it's not really doing anything right there. And then the fan shroud is over here and on this side, and it kind of goes up in feet per minute as you get closer. So the inner, inner areas, as it goes further out, it's a little bit... A little bit smaller, not a much, not much though. The flow rate from all that is volumetric flow was 590,000 cubic feet per minute, and the mass flow rate was 43,000 pounds per minute. This is the wet and dry bulb temperatures. You got the ambient air when it was tested, so the dry bulb on that was 74.8, and then 68 for the wet bulb with the fan air. It was 70.3 and 68 for the wet bowl. The psychometric chart was used to calculate the specific enthalpy and the moisture content. So for the ambient air, you got 0.0134 for the specific enthalpy. And for the fan air, you had 0.14 for the specific enthalpy. And those were in BTUs per pounds for the specific enthalpy. And then the moisture content um, for dry air, uh, pounds of H2O for dry air. From that, the airflow was 43,000 pounds per minute of the dry air. Moisture in, um, as stated before, 0.0134 pounds of water for pounds of dry air. The moisture out, 0.014 pounds of water for pounds of dry air. And the difference is 0 0.006 pounds of water for dry air. And the water vapor flow, 26 pounds per minute, or 3.1 gallons per minute. The key here, the latent heat of vaporization was 960.4 BTUs per pound of water. Water flow, 26 pounds of water per minute. And the heat flow was 25,000 BTUs per minute. This is a schematic of evaporative cooling, which we use. You can do either spray or evaporative. We use evaporative. Um, so the conclusions are the enthalpies of the ambient and the fan air remain constant. Moisture content increases, and the cooling occurs from evaporation or late heat of evaporation. And finally, just consult your Perry's handbook for data. And 
That's Mr. Perry. <laughs> and that finishes the cooling tower project.